Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and in today's video, we'll be doing a guide on assassination rogues for 8.2, primarily in PvE. This is going to be primarily a raiding guide for assassination right now. It's going to cover all the basics you need in order to get into some PvE content. And if you guys want to see maybe a Mythic Plus version of assassination in the near future, let me know in the comments below. So, without further ado, let's just jump in to what makes assassination good and what you need in order to succeed. So for this guide, I decided let's first start with the type of Azerite trade gear that you will want to get for your assassination. When it comes to raiding as a SAS, gear is very important and specific traits definitely help you achieve better numbers when it comes to one-on-one -on -one boss fights and maybe a bit of cleave if you do prefer that playstyle. But for most of the gameplay you're going to have as a SAS when you're focusing on pure single target playstyle, you'll want to stack double dose. This trait is very powerful and when you get to learn how to play around this trait by altering your playstyle very slightly, this will offer you probably the most amount of single target damage output. Stack double dose if you can help it. Another trait if you could stack, if you could, double nothing personal or triple nothing personal. It just lines up really well because you'll be pumping out so much nature damage and you'll be playing around your toxic blade a lot, which is a talent that increases your nature damage for a short duration. So you'll be able to really combine both nature damage out of it. Nothing personal is a really easy trait, but doesn't need to be stacked exactly. If you do want an easy playstyle, triple nothing personal is the way to go, but having one nothing personal is a decent choice. Another trait that's not terrible for the synergy is going to be Twist the Knife. Since it deals in Venom damage and it's all nature damage and you're increasing your poison damage with your mastery and the nature damage of your abilities with Toxic Blade, so having one of these isn't terrible. And Venom deals extra damage per common point spent and if it crits, it lasts one second longer. So it can give you a little bit more windows in order to get those double doses in. Next, let's discuss the talents. What are the talents you'll want to run and why would you want to run specific talents with our build? In the first row, elaborate planning is your best option. You would think maybe master poison for all this nature damage you'll be doing, but elaborate planning ends up coming on top. Another awesome build that feels really good to play is blindside. But because we have traits for double dose, which increases the damage of our mutilate offhand main hand poison applications that means we're not going to be getting a lot of dispatch capability because of double dose this is why we'll be running elaborate planning but blindside feels or i call it dispatch because that's what the talent used to be called blindside feels so good to play and it's great during executes i'm really hoping eventually blindside ends up being the choice to go and it could be if you are running anything but uh double dose trait but right now elaborate planning is going to be the best option in a level 30, if you do have subterfuge, you're going to want to run it if you have a trait of Shrouded Suffocation. If you have any amount of Shrouded Suffocation in your gear, where your girl will style generates extra components, it deals extra damage, then you will want to run subterfuge because it will increase the damage of the road, and then that damage just becomes so much stronger even with just one trait of choice. However, if that's not your play, you are going to be running Master Assassin. And since we're focusing on triple stack and double dose for poison damage, Master Assassin will be the best option for good openers and good damage. At level 45 right now, Vigor is the best option. You could maybe go deeper strat for AoE in Mythic Plus, but right now Vigor just ends up being way too strong in most situations. At level 60, you should just stick with Cheat Death. It's a great safety net, makes rogues super tanky in dungeons and raids. At level 75, Prey in the Week and Iron Wire are kind of going to be both good options. This one is mostly for the Mythic Plus aspect of the game. Doesn't really make a difference in PvE raids. At level 90, Toxic Blade is going to be our bread and butter. Although, if you do run Subterfuge and triple Shout Suffocation, even double, you could go with Exsanguinate, but your build is going to change. For a pure single target build, you'll want to go with Poison Heavy Playstyle with Toxic Blade. At level 100, this is like your AoE tree, it doesn't really matter what you run here, but the only one that actually has any single target potential is Poison Bomb. And because it actually does have some small increase in single target output, especially if we get lucky with procs, then Poison Bomb is going to be our choice. Now when it comes to shopping for gear as Assassination Rogue, let's take a look at our stats. What are we going to want to grab when it comes to our pieces of loot? 
When it comes to stats in BFA, however, I wish there was a certain like haste breakpoint and this amount of crit and that amount of mastery. But generally, right now, it is a good idea to sim everything. Sim basically means you're using a website to run simulations for your character and spit out relevant information. For example, there's a video I have with Raybots how to sim your character. I have that linked below. If I ever talking about simming anything in this video, then please reference the simulation craft video down below. But what you'll want to do is to find out your stat weights, every few pieces of gear that you get on your character. And these change depending on what traits you're running, what trinkets you have, what PC loot you got, what gems you got in your gear. So these numbers are always going to change. So this is why, God, I wish I could give you guys more accurate information than just to go sim your character. But seriously, start simming your character, whether you want to get the add-on or not. It is free on the website. Most of you guys will just have to wait a little bit for your sims to go through. But trust me, doing this early and starting to learn how to do this ahead of time will help you to do better as assassination. Let's talk about enchants, however, because those are going to be somewhat static. In your main hand, you'll always want to go for Force Multiplier. This will give you agility and whatever is your highest stat. And generally, you also want to go with Quick Navigation on your offhand. This sometimes changes, but as of recording this video right now, this is what most of the top tier Mythic Plus and Mythic Rogues are doing within raids. When it comes to gems and enchants, right now the game is telling me go for critical strike but also go for versatility because I'm saving a little bit of gold here and there until a couple things sell in the auction house. I have master here and verse but my gems are going to be crit, critical strike, critical strike and I want to eventually change these rings to crit as well. The game is telling me right now through my sims on stat weights I need more crit so that's exactly what I'm waiting for. Your stat weights are going to be different, so your enchants and gems are going to be based by the best stat that you get from SimCraft. Some of the more useful items that I can recommend you guys from the raid, and this is where most of your trinkets will come from, first of all. So we have the fight of Lady Ashvane. Trinket Ashvane's Razor Coral is going to be the strongest trinket for all specs of Rogue. If you can nab this one, even at normal, for 415 item level, this is going to be a very powerful trinket for anybody to get. Besides that, Crucible of Storms second boss still has a very powerful trinket, Lurker's Insidious Gift. If you can get this one to Titanforge pretty high, this one is actually still a very strong and relevant trinket. Of course, you can also use your sim to sim what kind of gear you have if you do use the website, or use websites like Hero Damage to bring you up some stats in terms of best trinkets right now. Here is the list on the screen of currently best top tier trinkets. This list is going to change as things get nerfed and buffed. So feel free to reference on HeroDamage.com because that website is ran by Rogue Main. So it's going to be a little bit more accurate when it comes to rogues. Finally, for essences, what should assassination be rolling and which essences should you be looking forward to? First of all, Memory of Lucid Dream is a very powerful essence that's fairly easy to get. This one is kind of sort of time gated, it just depends how much time you put in into Najatar, as in the zone Najatar, and level up your followers. As you level up your followers, you can get this one to rank 3 fairly quickly. This one is probably one of the easier essences to get early on, unless you go for something like Blood of the Enemy. This one is going to be your best essence for a very long time because this one synergizes super well with assassination during our vendetta phases, giving us a boost of energy as we are running out during our vendettas to really finish out full blown burst. Once you get condensed life force to rank 3, this one is going to be your primary one, but this one takes a little bit of farming from the new raid in order to get. If you're not doing a lot of farming for PvE and you feel like this one is going to be a little bit daunting, Memory of Lucid Dream is going to be a solid choice. Within raids, if you have a bunch of people running World Vein Resonance, this one can give you quite a bit extra output. However, if you're someone who's a lone wolf or don't really have anybody that's running World Vein as well, Essence of the Focusing Irons from Mythic Plus Dungeons is going to be very solid. To get this one at rank 1, you just need to do a plus 4 Mythic Plus Dungeon, and I think a lot of you guys can manage to do that. Those are fairly easy. If you cannot get this one, I would say someone like Crucible Flame isn't too terrible. I'd say something like Purification Protocol can give you sometimes extra damage, Conflict and Strive, Blood of the Enemy is not terrible either, Vision of Perfection kind of messes it with your Vendetta timing, so I really wouldn't be using that. But either way, those are going to be the best essences, and they change a lot. Again, reference Hero Damage, the website, if you guys want to have more accurate information as they update it fairly regularly. 
All right, let's talk about rogues. Assassination, what is your playstyle for assass right now? So let me first discuss about the opener that we need for assass. Your opener for assassination is going to be extremely important. How you want to start your opener is if you are playing the build that I am right now with Master Assassin, you don't have the Shrouded Suffocation, you're stacking double dose, which I have one, two, three of, then this is going to be your opener. You open up with a Mutilate to see how many common points you get. Normally, you would open up with a Garrote because that's how a lot of rogues are used to. But with Mutilate, you're more likely to get full common points to get your opener ramping. Garrote becomes a side thing that you don't need to get in the opener. Once you get however many common points between 3 and 4, you can pop Rupture on the enemy. You should also mutilate right afterwards, pop a Garot, and then you're ready to go ham. Depending on how many common points you have here with mutilate, you will still be sacrificing this extra common point right here with a Toxic Blade. Then for your opener, once you have all your dots rolling, let me actually refresh those real quick. You're gonna Vendetta, Vanish Toxic Blade, Invenom and start spending a common points uh, or energy on mutilates into envenoms. Once you feel like you don't have enough energy, you pop lucid dream and you keep spamming mutilates into envenoms over and over and over. If you need to refresh your dots, go ahead and do that. Refreshing Garo during this phase is going to be extremely valuable because you're getting so much energy and Garo just ends up being something that you don't really need to worry about as much and just keep spamming as much damage as you can. And then comes your sustained rotation as assassination. So my damage is actually not terrible for kind of getting that one key opener for you guys. You know, where I had to kind of delay my damage, so it's not going to be perfect. But still, my damage is alright. So here is the assassination rotation afterwards. Maintain all your dots, your rupture, and your garrote. And you get envenoms whenever you don't need to refresh your dots. Another thing that you could do is when you have four common points, you can also spend it on a garrote if you want to. In order to get that extra value for the common points spent. Outside of that, this is assassination. If you guys are new to assassination, what you should be doing is as soon as you get access to Venom, just spend in Venom and use Mutilates when you're learning assassination because that feels a lot smoother for a playstyle. If you are, however, learning how to play around Double Dose, what you should be doing is pulling energy. Double Dose is the reason why it's so powerful right now. When Mutilate applies Lethal Poison with both daggers, it the poison, the target for additional 3,100 damage. So I'm getting an average of double dose of about. Normally it hits for 13k every mutilate if they do get a poison hit. Or crits for 28k or higher. So the reason you want to make sure you're pulling your energy is when you're using Venom. You get this nifty buff called application for poisons is increased by 30%. That means you're more likely when you mutilate to in Venom. Because every single mutilate is a left hand attack, right hand attack. If both of them get the envenom in, then you'll be able to get a lot of value damage. So what you will want to do is start pulling your energy and then you'll envenom when you basically have about 100 energy or so where you can sink a couple of mutilates in. And if you ever are in trouble with common points, you'll want to make sure to envenom, get your common points, get those dots rolling and rebuild those envenoms as soon as you can and then kind of go back to pulling. When it comes to playing around Toxic Blade, you'll want to try to pull as much as you can and then Toxic Blade in Venom just, and just pump out as much damage as you humanly can with in Venoms as well as Mutilates because you have that Toxic Blade short window. And then you're basically just trying to kind of have a mini burst phase during that. Then you build common points and then you wait for the next setup. So this one feels a lot weird for a lot of rogues and this one definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. So if you're not used to the double dose playstyle and you're not really getting the hang of it, you feel like you're losing out on a lot of your damage that you normally would get, then don't really worry too much about it, especially if you're new. However, if you do want to get better at assassination, you st should start practicing it, you should start learning and start getting the uh, pacing for the playstyle with assassination. Besides that, the spec is fairly simple. Maintain Rupture, maintain Garrote, build common points with Mutilate, and then I guess try to min-max your Envenoms. And all it's about is getting the opener phases with your Vendetta, and then having like sustained phase until your Vendetta is back up. Then having big burst during Vendetta, then having sustained phase and whatnot. So that's basically how you end up playing Assassination. Your damage is going to be basically a roller coaster. You have really high highs and then kind of it will be sliding down, but very slowly but surely. If you're able to play with the double dose playstyle, you'll be able to maintain quite a bit of your damage. So what I want to do is do the opener properly, how it would in a real raid situation. It showcase you guys a bit of what the damage looks like for assassination. Because these train dummies are kind of right next to each other, there's not a lot I can really do about it. So I'm going to be hitting both of them. And I am going to be taking off one of my honor talents to intend to kill. Just so I don't have extra damage out. The poison bomb is going to cleave a little bit to the secondary target. 
There's not a lot I can do. They just have them a little bit closely stacked. Unless this guy is not that bad. This guy might not be bad. Another thing you can also notice with your mutilates, sometimes you get crits for your mutilates and they generate extra common points. That is something you need to take advantage of as assassination. So sometimes you'll be able to get like a mutilate into full in venom. And that's perfectly normal. You just have to ca be careful about it and pay attention to it as best as you can. And you can see I'm doing a decent amount of damage right now. And since I have so much energy at the very beginning, the energy pooling that I need for my uh, play style with double dose is just really easy to play around. I'm going to get a couple of these dots. Get my Cyclonic Blaster gets it some low on energy, so I'm not over capping on energy as the important part. And now we're playing the sustained play style. We're just gonna wait. We are gonna fill in that extra common point with Garot, which is helpful. Get almost full energy. Get a couple mutilates in there. And then we're kinda waiting. We do have Toxic Blade coming back very soon, so we actually are gonna eat up the common points and the energy just to pull the damage a little bit more because we'll get more value out of those mutilates. And we'll get a bunch of mutilates during this window as well. Then we're back to pulling. We're gonna get that in Venom there again. Do a bit of damage. There's a bit of cleave to the target, but it's okay. Back to Invenom and do it all over. And this one takes a little bit of adjustment. This one I'm still having a hard time with because I'm so used to just spamming my abilities with assassination. But if you can try to help yourself with that, you'll see a lot more damage from your double doses and you'll get a lot of value out of it. I toxic bladed there a little bit early, but that's okay. My dot fell out. That's something you don't want to do. So I'm making mistakes here, but I think it's a good idea to showcase you guys how... This rotation is pretty simple, but if you get distracted, you could definitely lose track of things. It's a bit of planning ahead in terms of common points, and partially about getting lucky with how many abilities you get. So I'm gonna try, I try to go for as many Invenoms in there, or Mutilates in there as I could, to try to min-max the, uh, the window for my Invenom just now. We're gonna go for, again, get a Garot in there, we're gonna wait, pull a little, pull a little damage. I'm back in. Mutilate, mutilate, get that rupture in just to get the max value out of it. Maybe one more mutilate. Nope, it's okay. Just going back to pulling. Vendetta back up. We're going to pop Vendetta, pop in full cooldowns, making sure we get everything refreshed. Toxic Blade up. And this is where we're going to go ham. So we lost out on a lot of damage earlier, but now we're going to gain a lot of it back. Get in the Lucid Dream back up and running so we can just spam those mutilates. A little higher chance with Venom for it to crit. And just kind of hoping that we do a lot of damage here. Every time you burst his assassination, this is where most of your damage is going to come from, is the burst phases. And then you're just trying to kind of maintain your burst afterwards, trying not to fall off too far off. I'm going to use my trinket while my energy is low, so I don't have to worry about it. Toxic Blade should be also on cooldown as best as you can. So sometimes if you can kind of plan out a couple of those mutilates during Toxic Blade, that is definitely helpful. And we're back up to doing 40-ish KDPS. Double doses are going to be a good portion of our damage. And trying to min-max the damage through that is going to be the way to go for Assass. Until the next phase with our Vendetta. Again, if you're new to Assassination, you could always just kind of just spam your abilities. It won't be that much of a damage loss if you're just trying to get learned to it, uh, learning the spec. Or you just want to kind of do some of the content casually. But if you do want to get into more hardcore single target damage fights and raid fights, you definitely will want to take advantage of some of the damage outputs that you have with a sass. I'm going to save that Garot yet. I mean, we want to make sure Garot is refreshed the last moment when needed. We're going to wait our common points, Toxic Blade, and get as much damage during this as possible. Get a Rupture back up. Mutilate, maybe one more. One more, got it, perfect. And we're just trying to maintain our damage. 30 seconds left on our Vendetta. Trying to min-max the damage from here and just kind of trying to go easy here. Got enough energy, let's get a couple mutilates in. And we should have a uh, little we'll rupture here, actually. Make sure we got our full calm points. Toxic Blade, get a couple of Venoms in. Vendetta coming up very, very soon. And then we'll be going back all over it again with the burst rotation. We're gonna get full calm points, waiting for our Vendetta. And we're gonna vanish to get that higher chance to crit with Master Assassin. And we're just gonna go ham on the target, as much damage as we humanly can. And hopefully we'll be able to get our Memory Lucid Dream very shortly here. With Memory Lucid Dream, that's another thing to watch for. When you're playing with Memory Lucid Dream, you basically just want to use it when you don't have a ability to press during your energy. Like when you need to mutilate and you know you won't have enough energy, you won't have 55 energy. So there's no real time to, there's no specific moment like, okay, let's get two finishes in, then Lucid Dream. It's kind of like, depends if you have Bloodlust, depends if you get in Haste Prox, depends on the situation. There's a lot of things that factor into whether you should go Hamble right there with your Lucid Dream or whether you should kind of delay it a little bit. 
So I just basically try to use it as soon as I know I'm going to be running out of energy. You are going to be taking the global to press the ability to actually get the big setup going. So that is something to take uh, into the account every single time you play. But that's going to be everything that I have for you guys when it comes to playing Assassination. I feel like I covered everything in as much of detail as I could. This video isn't really new. It's basically a review of what we had last time with patch 8.1 and even patch 8.0 not a lot has changed when it comes to assassins we just got a few new essences and if you guys were not aware of the playstyle where you pull your energy it is kind of a fun playstyle it's not something that's really a favorite of mine personally i would love for blind set to become very useful and this trait kind of holds us back from using it but as long as that trait stays strong blind set is gonna have to take a sidestep Again, if you guys don't like the pulling playstyle, you could still play the double dose. You just won't really get as much damage out of your double doses. But in while your damage might suffer a little bit, it won't be a huge noticeable thing for the most part. Especially if you're new, don't bog yourself down. But if you are someone who's somewhat experienced with Rogue and do want to learn a more damage output playstyle, you should try to get used to this pulling energy thing that Assassination is doing right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat helpful. Thank you all and I'll see all of you in another video.